If you have been using tools like GitHub Copilot, Cursor, or any other coding assistant, you might have experienced this frustrating cycle. You throw a prompt at the AI, you get back what looks like decent code, and then you realize it does not actually work the way you intended. Maybe it compiles but misses your actual requirement. Maybe the architecture choices are completely different from what you have been picked by yourself. This approach has a name and people are calling it vibe coding. You are essentially hoping that the AI vibes with your intent and produces something usable. For quick prototypes and demos, vibe coding works wonderfully. You can go from an idea to something working on your screen in literally minutes. But when you are building something more serious, something you actually need to deploy and maintain, this approach falls apart pretty quickly. The problem is not that these AI assistants are bad at writing code. They are actually incredibly good at it. The real issue is that we are treating them like magic boxes instead of what they actually are. So this is why GitHub recently released something called Spackit. And I have to say, it is one of the most interesting open source projects I have seen this year. It is completely free, released under the MIT license, and it fundamentally changes how you work with a coding tool. Spackit works through a structured workflow that has multiple checkpoints along the way. You start by establishing what are called governing principles for your project. Think of this as your project constitution. You define things like what matters most for code quality, what your testing standard should be, how you want the user experience to feel, and what kind of performance requirement you have. This is not just documentation that sits in a folder somewhere. These principles actively guide every decision the AI makes throughout the development process. So for example, instead of saying build me a user dashboard using React and Node, you would say user need a way to see their activity over time, compare different metrics and export their data for further analysis. You are defining the intent, not the implementation. After your specification is solid, you move into the planning phase. This is where you finally get to talk about the technical stack. You tell the EA whether you want to use Python or JavaScript. Whether you prefer a specific framework, what kind of database makes sense for your use cases. The AI takes your specification and your technical preferences and creates a detailed implementation plan. It maps out the architecture, identifies the component you will need, and thinks through potential technical challenges before any code gets written. Next comes the task breakdown phase. The AI looks at your specification and your implementation plan and breaks everything down into small, concrete, testable tasks. And finally, you got the implementation phase. This is where the AI actually start writing code. But here is what makes it different from vibe coding. The AI is not just generating code based on a watch prompt. It knows exactly what it is supposed to build because the specification told it. Let me show you how to actually get started with spec kit because it is super simple. The project lives on GitHub and you can find it by searching for GitHub Spackit. I will drop the link in the description below so you can easily access it. Spackit is a command line tool which might sound intimidating if you are not used to working in the terminal but trust me, it is much simpler than it sounds. You will need a few things installed on your machine before you begin. First, you need Python. You also need something called UV which is a package manager for Python. Think of it like NPM is for JavaScript. And of course, you need Git for version control. Once you have these sorted, installing Spackit is single command. You use UV tool install, point it at the Spackit repository and it handles everything for you. What is nice about installing it this way is that it becomes available everywhere on your system. You do not need to reinstall it for every project. You just install it once and you are good to go. To start a new project with Spackit, you run a command called specify in it, followed by your project name. Let me walk through what happens when you do this. The tool will ask you which AI assistant you want to use. Right now, it supports several options including GitHub Copilot, Cloud Code, Gemini CLI, Cursor and few others. For this demonstration, I am going to use GitHub Copilot because it integrates really well with Spackit and most developers already have access to it. After you select your AI assistant, Spackit downloads the latest template 
and set up your project structure. It will create a bunch of helpful files and folders that form the foundation of your spec driven workflow. You will see a folder called specify that contains your project template, your memory files where the AI stores important context and script that automate various parts of the process. All of this happens automatically. You do not need to create any of these files manually. After the installation, when you open the project, you will notice that your AI assistant now has access to special slash command. These are the commands that drive the spec driver development workflow. The first command you want to use is the constitution command. This is where you establish those governing principles I mentioned earlier. You might tell it something like create principles focused on writing clean maintainable code ensuring best user experience across all features and optimizing for performance. After your constitution is in place, you move to the specify command. This is where you describe what you want to build. Let us say I want to build a recipe management application. I would use the specify command and then write something like this. I want to create an application that helps home cooks organize their favorite recipes. Users should be able to add recipes manually or import them from websites. Notice how I am not mentioning anything about databases or framework or programming languages. I am purely focused on what the app should do and why someone would want to use it. The next command is the plan command. This is where you finally get technical. You might say something like, I want to build this using Next.js for the front end with React components, Node.js for the back end, MongoDB for the databases and host everything on Vercel. Once you are happy with the plan, you run the task command. This tells the AI to break down the plans into concrete list of implementation tasks. You will get a document that lists out every single thing that needs to be built, in what order and with clear acceptance criteria for each task. Some tasks will be marked as parallel meaning they can be worked on independently. The task document becomes your roadmap. You can review it and make sure the breakdown makes sense. If you see task that seems too large or too large, you can ask the AI to break them down further. The goal is to have tasks that are small enough to implement and test in isolation, but meaningful enough that they deliver actual value. Finally, you run the implementation command. This is where the magic happens. The AI start working through the task list, implementing each piece according to the specification and the plan. It writes the code, set up the necessary files and folders, install dependencies and configures everything properly. After implementation is complete, you will have a working application, but you are not done yet. You still need to test everything thoroughly, especially things that might show errors in the browser console that the AI cannot see. If you find issues, you can copy those error messages back to your AI assistant and ask it to fix them. Because it has the full context from the specification and the plan, it can usually resolve problems much faster than if you were starting from scratch. The spec driven approach also makes collaboration much easier. If you are working with a team, everyone can read the specifications and understand what the application is supposed to do. There is no ambiguity about requirement or intent. The plan document becomes a shared technical vision that everyone can refer to and the task breakdown makes it easy to divide work among team members. Also, spec it is still under active development and new features are being added regularly. There are some limitations you should be aware of. Once you initialize a project with a specific AI assistant, switching to a different one is not straightforward. The tool works best for new projects rather than adding features onto existing code bases. And because it is community driven, some AI assistant integration are more polished than other. But even with these limitations, I find it incredibly valuable for the kind of work it do. If you are interested in trying Specket, I highly recommend starting with the small side project. Do not try to use it for your most critical production system right away. Pay attention to how the AI respond to your specification and learn what kind of language works best. So that's it from the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.